Now I'm into solar power. I've got a 3000 watt inverter and I use lithium and lead acid battery storage. And one of the things I'm trying to do is work the lead acid and the lithium together by switching them. I want to bring in the lead acid when there's a large load so it takes the big hit and then it will switch back to lithium uh, when the large load is passed and it's just the, the smaller long-term loads. So I've done a little setup using some materials that I've already got and I'm going to start doing some experiments with it. Now this is my battery setup. Um, it looks a bit of a mess because it was initially two of these lead acid batteries and then it became four and then it became six and then there was lithium cells added into it. So it's a bit experimental. Everything's rated correctly and fused correctly and it's all safe. There's no excessive heat produced anywhere or anything. So it just doesn't look very neat. I've got three Victron solar charge controllers. The reason I've got three is because it started with one pair of panels and then two pairs of panels and then three pairs of panels. So I've ended up with three charge controllers. And this is the inverter, a little Phoenix inverter smart. It's a 3000 volt amp, not a 3000 watt. So it depends on the type of load you're running, the, how much uh, power you can actually get out of it. At the moment, all the charge coming in from the solar panels is going into the lithium cells and the lead acid are getting trickle charged through that diode from the lithium side. The inverter is connected to the lithium and is running all the loads and what I'm going to experiment with is switching this contactor in to bring in the lead acid when there's a larger load. And I'm going to do that initially by using the relay output on the inverter to switch it when the fan comes in and the fan comes in when there's a, a large load and when there's a higher temperature but uh, it always comes in above a certain load so I'm going to try that initially I should explain that the purpose of the diode is twofold if you connect the lead acid batteries I found that when I connected the lead acid batteries directly in parallel with the lithium cells the voltage when the lithium was fully charged was a bit high for the lead acid and it was producing a bit much hydrogen but the voltage drop across the diode brought it down to just about the right level to trickle charge them or float charge them and also it's when I'm charging the lead acid with a charger it's so it doesn't affect the lithium because it doesn't like being float charged at the, the same level as the lead acid so that's the reason for the diode now I've disconnected the diode for this experiment and I've also got this little device that will measure what's coming in and out of the, the lead acid. I've had to bring everything out of the house into the, the attic of the workshop here where the batteries are because the Victron Bluetooth range isn't very good and in the house it keeps dropping out. So what I'm going to do is we'll set the inverter to... fan mode, the relay to fan mode and I've got a 2000 watt kettle and a little 700 watt heater so when the fan comes in on the inverter it should now bring in in parallel the lead acid with the lithium so I'll put on the kettle and see what happens. Well, it's brought in the contactor. I've got about 65 amps coming out the lithium. And it's pulling about 15 out the lead acid. So I'll bring in the heater as well. That's taking it up to it's about the maximum you could run that at. In fact, it's coming up an overload warning. We've got 90 odd amps coming out of the lithium and 26, 27 coming out of the lead acid. Right, 
I'm going to try this a different way, which might work a bit better than using the fan to bring in the contactor. Um, I'm going to try it on low battery and I'll set the low battery alarm to bring in the relay. Now I'll try 25.5 volts initially. And we'll see what that does. Brought it in a low battery with a kettle of 63 amps coming out the lithium and 13 out the lead acid. Let's bring in the heater as well. And I put almost 90 on the well, actually at 90 on the lithium. And the lead acid is 26. And it's dropped out again because it's no longer low battery. That's with the heater on. So, put the heater off. I think it might be worth experimenting some more with this low battery to bring in the the contactor and parallel the lithium with the lead acid because it'll work even when there's not a big load on the inverter if the voltage drops due to my 24 volt loads it'll still bring them in together which could be useful but I guess it's set at the right level my only concern is it might hunt because it's went low battery it'll bring in the lead acid along with the lithium, which will bring the voltage up and then it might drop out. In fact, I think I'll experiment with that right now, see if I can get it to do that. Right, with the kettle on, it's dropping the voltage to about 25.2. So if I set the low voltage to 25.2, One five, let's see. We'll see what happens then. That's causing it to hunt. When it brings in the lead acid, the voltage increases, so it drops out the low voltage warning, which drops out the contactor. However, it was working at the higher level. This I might get this to work. This, this might be the way to do it. Right, let's set this back up to... It did seem to work at 25.5, so I'll put it back to that. Try it again. It's not hunting because it's staying below 25.5. There's only three and a half amps coming out of the lead acid. So that's a problem. I'm really wanting to have the large load on the lead acid. So we may need to do a complete changeover, a make before break changeover with the large loads, the large short term loads will go onto the lead acid and then when that's over and back onto the lower loads, the lead acid will get charged up again through the diode. Well I've been playing about with that setup for a few days and it's actually working really well. Uh, far better than I thought it would. It was just an experiment really, but it's working so well I think I'm actually going to try and do something permanent with it. There'll be a few safeguards to put in place, for example, you wouldn't want too much voltage difference between the batteries. 
But the big thing seems to be that I think it will need to be a complete changeover, a make before break changeover. I've had a, a quick look for contactors that could maybe do that and I haven't really found anything. Somebody suggested a 24 volt winch contactor. They might work because they're reversible, but I can't imagine they'll be make before break um, because you would have, you know, you'd be trying to turn the motor both directions at the same time and obviously that's not going to work. But uh, if anyone's doing anything similar and you've figured out a way of doing it, uh, please feel free to comment. Um, and if I do get any further with this, I'll, I'll make another video of how it works. So, please subscribe. <laughs>